For those of you who have no idea who Howard Marks is, you must go back and check out my last video about the book that he has written, The Most Important Thing. Howard Marks is a billionaire investor and has more than half a century of experience in investing. Once in a quarter or two, Howard has been writing memos, sharing his outlook on the market to his clients, famously called as The Memo by Howard Marks. And his insights are loved even by Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffet, who says every time he reads the memo, he learns something new. Describing 20 most important things for being successful in investing in his past book, The Most Important Thing, Marx in 2017 went on to write immensely about the most important thing out of the 20 most important thing, which is the importance of cycles. Let us see what we can learn from half a century investing experience of Howard and how we can time the market cycles and increase our odds on emerging out successful. This is the better investor helping you achieve your financial goals and freedom through organizing your finance, stock market investing and learning from billionaire. And these are top 5 lessons from the book Mastering the Market Cycle by Howard Marks. Lesson number 1. Why are there cycles? The US GDP in last 30 years have grown at an average rate of 2.3% per annum. But why the GDP did not grow by 2.3% every year? There were years when it grew up by 3% and then sometimes when it just grew by 1%. Sometimes it degrew by minus 3% and sometimes it grew by almost 5%. But why in the world did it not grow by 2.3% every year simply? Similarly, the Vintage Indian Index of Sensex, which comprises of 30 largest companies of India, has given compounded annual return of 23% per annum. But why has it not given 23% return just every year? Sometimes it has given return of 44% and sometimes minus 22%. Sometimes plus 237% and then sometimes minus 47% and the answer is simple and that is unlike electrons who every time flows as you turn on the lights of your room unanimously markets economies and things similar include humans which have a mind of their own and minds of humans are driven by their emotions of greed and fear and mass psychology all humans become optimist at the same time which leads to over optimism when things just happen as they happen most of the times that is average their optimism is hurt and then they become pessimists and then all of them become pessimists at the same time and this makes them over pessimist and then again when things happen as they most of the times happen that is average they again become optimistic and happy this cycle of human behavior continues and goes on and on and it is this kind of behavior that lies at the foundations of each and every cycle be it business economics and markets suppose you live in a city and there you are one of the five real estate developers in your city seeing the growth in the population in your city and more number of immigrants coming from other places the demand of house is on the rise you sense this and you think that there is a great opportunity to make money selling houses. Being conservative, you build new houses and they get filled. Good job. But things do not end here. You are not the only one thinking like this. The other real estate developers do the same thing and make money. But the demand is still continuing. And now, this has been noticed by some other businessmen too who have just stepped foot in the real estate development. Due to the rising demand, the inventory again gets filled up. And same happens with everyone. Seeing such a mega trend, all the builders go on massive expansion spree, taking huge debts from the bank, finally leading to oversupply. When there is oversupply, houses are selling at the rates as everyone had expected them to sell. The builders who took debt from banks cannot repay the loan since there is no income from selling houses. The cash flows are tight. The situation aggravates and then the companies file for bankruptcies. Every builder has got the sense of oversupply, even the banks. 
बैंक वॉन्ट द मनी नाउ दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू लेंड टू एनी वन हु वॉन्ट्स टू बिल्ड द रियल इस्टेट एवरी वन इज ओवर कॉशियस मोस्ट ऑफ द रियल इस्टेट बिल्डर्स हैव फ्लीड द सिटी एंड देर आर जस्ट अ हैंडफुल लेफ्ट नाउ एंड द सेम साइकिल रिपीट्स इट सेल्फ अनटिल देर इज इनफ पॉपुलेशन लीडिंग टू मोर डिमांड एंड थिंग्स चेंज एंड सेम थिंग्स हैपन अगेन Clearly the odds of making money were highest when there were just five developers and no one had any good view on the real estate demand and the odds of losing the money were highest when everyone was too optimistic thus howard says that the odds of being successful changes as our position in the cycle change if we don't change our investment stance as these things change we are being passive regarding cycles when everyone is optimistic asset prices are high and odds of winning are not in our favor and when everyone is pessimistic which makes asset prices to be low that is the times when odds are in our favor this is counterintuitive and that makes investing simple but not easy lesson number 2 the economic cycle the output of an economy is the product of hours worked and output per hour thus the long term growth of an economy is determined primarily by the fundamental factors like birth rate and the rate of gain in productivity these factors generally change very little from year to year and only gradually from decade to decade one might be tempted to expect the performance of economies to be consistent from year to year however number of factors are subject to variability causing economic growth even as it follows the underlying trend line the more the economy rises the more likely is it that the companies will expand their profits and stock markets will rise the main question most people care about with regards to economy are whether we will have growth or recession in a given year and what the rate of change will be the developments these people talk about are short term developments they are important but not everything the major reason as pointed out earlier on which the economic expansion depends on in long run is the number of hours worked which will rise due to rise in population this fundamentally births are one of the main reason to presume that economic growth will be positive and shrinking of population means positive gdp growth faces a headwind so what are the factors that can alter nation's birth rate or the average number of children a couple has some of these can be rules like china's outstanding long standing but recently revised one child policy wars like world wars economic conditions which among other things alter people's feeling about whether they can afford children social moves like delaying family formation however with whatever rate the population is growing gdp will grow faster if productivity is rising or slower if it is falling changes in productivity like changes in birth rate take place in a gradual manner and require long period to take effect the first big gains occurred during industrial revolution from 1760s to 1830 when human labor was replaced with machines the second major gains occurred in the late 19th to early 20th century after advent of automobiles and electricity the third major change occurred in late 20th century after advent of computer and internet and of course the fourth wave is underway now under the garb of artificial intelligence these factors set the mega trend of the gdp growth of any country the short term fluctuations which happen along the secular gdp trends result just and just because of the human factor which is our psychology and behavior when daily headlines are favorable people are optimistic and spending is more investors think that election results will be favorable or unfavorable and thus are sometimes afraid to put money in investing or expanding their business people spend more because they feel rich after the land they owned or the stock they owned has appreciated loan is available easily to fund discretionary spends even like some pandemic has caused fear in the mind of the people some natural disaster temporarily affected people consecutive good 
और बैड मानसून हैज मेड फार्मर्स एंड इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट एक्सट्रापोलेट द सेम ट्रेंड इन टू द फ्यूचर लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट वी ऑल आर कंसर्न इन आर नेबर्स लाइफ एंड वॉन्ट टू साइलेंटली कम्पीट विद दैम और डिजायर टू डू सो दिस लीड्स टू क्राउड मेंटेलिटी दस लॉन्ग टर्म इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ इज स्टडी फॉर लॉन्ग पीरियड्स ऑफ टाइम बट सब्जेक्ट टू चेंज परसेंट टू लॉन्ग टर्म साइकल्स वेर एज शॉर्ट टर्म इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ फॉलोज द लॉन्ग टर्म ट्रेंड लाइन ऑन एवरेज बट ऑसिलेट्स अराउंड द ट्रेंड लाइन फ्रॉम ईयर टू ईयर लेसन नंबर थ्री गवर्नमेंट्स इन्वॉल्वमेंट विद द इकोनॉमिक साइकिल एक्सट्रीम साइक्लिकलिटी इज कंसिडर्ड अनडिजायरेबल टू मच स्ट्रेंथ कैन किंडल इन्फ्लेशन एंड टेक द इकोनॉमी सो हाई दैट रिसेशन बिकम्स अनएवॉर्डेबल टू मच वीकनेस ऑन द अदर हैंड्स कॉजेज कंपनीज प्रॉफिट टू फॉल एंड कैन कॉज पीपल लूज देयर जॉब्स दस इट इज जॉब ऑफ सेंट्रल बैंक एंड गवर्नमेंट्स टू मैनुपुलेट साइकल्स इन जनरल एंड फ्रॉम पास्ट एक्सपीरियंस इन्फ्लेशन इज व्यूड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ स्ट्रॉन्ग अपवर्ड मूवमेंट ऑफ द इकोनॉमिक साइकल्स The cost of goods can escalate for few reasons that may be the demand is in far excess of the supply which most of the times happen during the real estate cycle or a commodity cycle or the input costs such as raw material labor etc or taxes have increased and companies pass on this to their customers by increasing the price of the product last but not the least if importing countries currency declines relative to the exporting country currency the efforts of the central banks to control the inflation is all about taking some of the steam out of the already hot economy central banks does this by reducing the money supply or raising interest rates thereby discouraging companies to take debt to expand their business or selling stocks and bonds when private players purchase stocks and bonds from government money is taken out of the circulation this tends to reduce the demand for goods and thus discourages inflation but over time the job of governments had not just been to reduce inflation but to support the economy which it does by providing employment economic expansion causes employment which is beneficial for economy but this also produces inflation which is dangerous similarly reducing money supply and raising interest rates help in battling and controlling inflation but then it also reduces employment which is dangerous too so the two tasks that is to stimulate the economy and restraining it cannot be done at the same time both at once so the central banks are always battling the dilemma whether it is the right time to raise the rates or not if yes then to what extent Apart from central banks government's main tools for managing cycles are easing taxation and making it more stringent increasing government spending providing stimulus to industries as we have been seeing especially in India with many PLI incentives by government but just like the central banks government have the dilemma of their own if they spend too much then the deficit between money received from taxes and spending would increase multifolds thus leaving governments at the greater risk of extremity in the future by raising taxation and less spending on top of that government generally have five year tenure in most of the capitalistic countries thus when nearing elections governments generally try to demonstrate economic expansion leading to high employment not giving much thought about the extreme deviation which could be caused by it in the future lesson number 4 the pendulum in investor psychology the swings in the emotion and psychology influence the corporate profits but they also play a very important part in causing ups and downs in the investment world especially in the short run the mood swings of the stock market resemble the movement of a pendulum Although the midpoint of its arc describes the location of the pendulum but on an average it spends a very little time there instead it is always swinging towards or away from the extremes the superior investors resist psychological excesses and thus refuse to participate in these swings as howard says the vast majority of highly superior investors i know are unemotional by nature in fact 
I believe their unemotional nature is one of the great contributors to their success. People's interpretation of things are mainly a result of how they feel emotionally. When people are euphoric, no matter the news be objectively good or bad, everything is painted with optimism and positivity for the market. To give a few example, in case of strong economic data shows strong economy stocks rally. In case of weak data, Fed or central bank will lower interest rate. Good for markets, stocks rally. In case of data is as expected, shows low volatility in economy, stocks rally. Banks made $4 billion, business conditions favorable, stocks rally. Banks lose $4 billion, bad news is out of the way, stocks rally. Oil spikes, a mark of glowing global economy contributing to strong demand stocks rally oil drops more purchasing power for consumer stocks rally inflation spikes it will cause asset prices to appreciate stocks rally inflation drops it improves quality of earnings due to low commodity prices stocks rally of course the same behavior also applies in the opposite direction when psychology is negative and markets have been falling for a while Everything is capable of being interpreted negatively, as you would have noticed in the COVID times. Lesson number 5. The Credit Cycles Some activities like home buying are highly responsive to movements in economic cycle and the others like purchasing food are not. But the credit cycle that we are going to discuss here falls in the former category. It is both highly responsive to economic developments and also highly influential. Credit cycle can be easily understood through the metaphor of the window. In short, sometimes it opens and sometimes it's closed. And in financial world, people make frequent reference for that as credit window, as in the place you go to borrow money. When the window is open, financing is plentiful. And when the window is shut, the financing is scarce and hard to get. Finally. It is essential to always bear in mind that the window can go from wide open to slam shut in just an instant. But why is credit cycle so important? First, the credit or borrowed money is an essential ingredient in the productive process of an economy as discussed. Thus, the ability of the companies to grow usually depends on availability of incremental capital. If the capital window is closed, it is hard to finance growth. Second, the company generally don't pay their debts, they just roll over, that is, new debt to pay the old debt. But if company is unable to issue new debt at the time existing debt is maturing, it may lead to default and the company can then be forced into bankruptcy. So one of the most asked questions that where we stand in the current credit cycle can be determined by whether credit or borrowed money is easy or difficult to obtain. Third, the financial institutions represent a special exaggerated case of reliance on credit cycle. Financial institutions, especially banks, are in the business of trading money and they need access to financing and borrowed money to keep that business running. Consider for example a bank that takes deposits from people that can be withdrawn any day, any time by its depositors, which every bank does, and then it uses these deposits to give housing loans that will only be repaid after 30 years. What will happen if all the depositors demand their money on the same day? If there is no access to credit window or no help from the government, then the bank may fail. Fourth and finally, the credit window gives signals that have great psychological impact. A closed credit window causes fear to spread, even out of the proportion to business negative realities. The process is a vicious cycle and simple to understand. The economy moves into a period of prosperity. Providers of capital thrive, increasing the money they borrow. Because bad news is scarce, the risk entailed in lending money and investing seem to have shrunk. Risk averseness disappears. Financial institutions move to expand their business, that is to provide even more capital. They compete for market share by lowering demanded returns, that is cutting interest rates, lowering lending standards, providing more capital. At the extreme, 
द लेंडर्स गिव मनी टू बिजनेस एंड पीपल दैट आर एंड वर्थ ऑफ बींग फाइनेंसड एज हाउ इट सेज द वर्स्ट लोन्स आर गिवन इन द बेस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स दिस लीड्स टू कैपिटल डिस्ट्रक्शन वेन द पॉइंट इज रीच द अपलेग इज रिवर्स्ड लॉसेज कॉजेज लेंडर्स टू बिकम डिस्करेज एंड शाई अवे रिस्क अवर्सनेस राइजेज एंड अलॉन्ग विद इट इंटरेस्ट रेट्स एंड रिस्ट्रिक्शंस लेस कैपिटल इज नाउ मेड अवेलेबल एंड एट द बॉटम ऑफ द साइकिल ओनली टू द मोस्ट क्वालिफाइड सक्सेसफुल कंपनीज एंड जनरली बिग क्लीन कंपनीज टेंस टू गेट बिगर एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम अदर कंपनीज बिकम स्टार्ट फॉर कैपिटल बॉडोअर्स आर अनेबल टू रोल ओवर देयर डेट्स लीडिंग टू डिफॉल्ट एंड बैंक रपसीज दिस प्रोसेस कंट्रीब्यूट्स एंड रीनफोर्सेज टू इकोनॉमिक कॉन्ट्रैक्शन of course at this extreme the process is ready to be reversed again because the competition to make loans or investments is low high returns can be demanded contrarians who commit capital at this time have a shot at high returns and those tempting high returns draw in capital in this way recovery begins to be fueled let's have a quick recap all humans become optimist at the same time which leads to over optimism when things just happen as they happen most of the time that is average their optimism is hurt and they become pessimist all of them becoming pessimist at the same time make them over pessimist and then again when things happen as they most of the times happen that is average they again become optimistic and happy this cycle of human behavior continues and goes on and on and it is this kind of behavior that lies at the foundation of each and every cycle the output of an economy is the product of hours worked and output per hour thus the long term growth of an economy is determined primarily by fundamental factors like birth rate and rate of gain in productivity these factors generally change very little from year to year and only gradually from decade to decade these factors set the mega trend of the gdp growth of any country the short term fluctuations which happen along the secular gdp trends result just and just because of the human factor which is our psychology and behavior extreme cyclicality is considered undesirable too much strength can kindle inflation and take the economy so high that a recession becomes unavoidable and too much weakness on the other hand causes companies profits to fall and can cause people lose their job thus it is job of the central banks and governments to manipulate cycles this government does by manipulating interest rates increasing reducing taxation printing more money and giving it in the hands of the people the mood swings of the stock market resemble the movement of a pendulum although the midpoint of its arc describes the location of the pendulum but on an average it spends a very little time there instead it is always swinging towards or away from the extremes credit cycle can be easily understood through the metaphor of the window when the window is open financing is plentiful businesses expand and when the window is shut financing is scarce money is only available to best of the businesses and poor businesses go bankrupt economies slow down the fear of ever slowing economy makes the credit window to go open again and the whole cycle repeats itself That's it guys if you like the video please like share and subscribe you can check out my last video on the biography of buffett i will come again with another book summary soon until then cheers guys